And we're halfway through now a history-making term for Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, in a new interview, the vice president talks about her first reaction to the Supreme Court overturning Roe, the administration's plan for handling the southern border, and her relationship with the president. Let's bring in now the author of that piece, special correspondent at Vanity Fair and host of the Fast Politics podcast, Molly Jong Fast. Uh, Molly, thanks so much for being with us. Um, you know, I always found with Bob Dole, there was, there was this, this great uh, disconnect between the public image of Bob Dole and the private uh, guy that you, you, you talk to behind the scenes. I must say in all my years, in all my decades in Washington and in and out of, 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 of politics, I've got to say, the only other person that's had is that great of a divide is Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. who has this public image of, of this stilted, uh, tough, whatever you want to call it, however her detractors paint her, the public image that seems to be out there. And then the private person you talk to who is very warm, funny, relaxed, mm -hmm. really engaging. I'm curious your impressions when you sat down with the vice president and what you learned. Yeah, I mean, I had that same thought. I was like, why is she trying to make me feel comfortable? She is, the, you know, the most powerful woman ever in this country, and she's trying, you know, making sure I have my water. Um, yeah, I found her to be very um, engaging and also just very um, funny and, uh, and very versed in the issues. Remember, she comes from, you know, she's a lawyer, she's an AG. She's... Uh, very serious person. I mean, you don't get to be the first, first, first AG, first female uh, uh, East Indian <clears throat> senator, first, you know, female vice president. You don't get to be those things unless you are very, 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 um, you know, prepared and serious. Molly, uh, I know the vice president pretty well for a long time. And one of the things that strikes me, she's very, as Joe says, very sociable, very kind. I mean, I've talked to her FaceTime while she was cooking. Yeah. And she does cook uh, for the family. But then she in the next minute can say, now, Reverend, I'm not going this far on this issue where you are, uh, but I will do this. Have, did you find that kind of committed, self-aware person that knows exactly where they are and at the same time cannot I won't be offensive about it, but she just knows who she is and what she believes in. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And you know, I'm I do a lot of interviews for my podcast, so I'm pretty good at getting people to talk about stuff they don't want to talk about. And one of the things I really wanted her to talk about was Ron DeSantis. And we were talking about abortion, and I said, well, you know, Ron DeSantis has this six-week bill, which is, and you could tell she just wasn't going to give it to me. You know, she just went right to like the GOP. She's very, very um, organized and, you know, a very, very good at being personable, but also being focused. And I think that's frustrating as an interviewer, but very useful as a politician. Molly, you talked to the vice president about abortion and the landmark decision this year, the Supreme Court. You said that she, you asked if she was surprised. And can you talk about her response and how she engaged with that? Because watching it from afar, it was surprising that some in the Biden White House seemed surprised by the reversal of Roe after the leaked memo. Yeah, so it was really interesting because once SB 8, that Texas law that basically overturned Roe, was allowed to stand, you know, the Supreme Court looked at it on the shadow docket and decided to let it stand. That was like a full, almost, you know, maybe nine months before the leaked decision. And when that happened, I was pretty sure they were going to overturn Roe. I mean, I saw the writing on the wall. And I think a lot of people did. Um, and I asked her, I said, when that happened, did you think this is it? It's over? And she said, well, you know, she was still, she still sort of had this, you know, belief that maybe it wouldn't happen because she is, you know, she's a lawyer and she knew how big the stakes were here, I think. And um, but once I think once she got the draft decision, she was completely I think we were all so shocked. I mean, 50 years of precedence down, you know, it's just so shocking. Um, but I did think, you know, her. I, I had heard from other people around her that she had 
when she had found the leak, she had gotten, when she had sort of, when they they had published it, she had gotten all the opinions. She had pulled everything, you know, from Casey to, you know, the early, the 1973 decision. And she went through everything and read it and really studied up on it. And that, I think, is something we don't see in writing about her, is that she's very, very studious. And she went and sat with her staff and was like, what are we going to do about this? And she was the one who immediately connected it to birth control and to gay marriage. And I think that that was really important. But I do think there, I think that a lot of us were were surprised. The other thing I thought was really interesting was that I said to her, you know, I was sort of weirdly vindicated because I knew it was coming. And she was like, you know, I was so devastated for all these women that I couldn't even be vindicated. And I thought that was a really important place to come from. And I think that women really do see how meaningful this is in a way that maybe men don't. All right. Special correspondent Vanity Fair. Molly John Fast, thank you so much for being with us. An absolutely fascinating interview. Uh, we appreciate it. I hope you have a great holiday season. And coming up.